I'm going to send it to Jeff real quickly. That's awesome. So that he can at least put it up. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't know if we want to put it up, but. But yeah, go, go ahead and say, I mean, maybe what we just do is, I mean, maybe this is a message uh, because, um, I, but it just kept printing out weirdly for me. I just went to look at it and a whole section was missing. And, you know, that's when I started going back through the emails. That, that's interesting. So you printed out the PDF. I mean, that's what PDF is supposed to do. It's supposed to eliminate any kind of reformatting. Yeah, well, it, it, it yeah. all of a sudden it, it was, it wasn't matching what you had sent me. You know, it just, okay. yeah. Yeah. anyway. Okay. All okay. right. Well, um, so, so you think I should send it to Jeff? I mean, I hate to just say, no, guys, you, I'm not going to. Well, the only thing is Jeff will start talking about it and nobody else will know what he's talking about. Well, Hey everyone. Um, I'm not sure who's running the meeting today on the city side. That would be me. Oh, great. I don't think we've met before. I got your email about putting together the lists of everyone. Yeah. Okay, I still see you as a square. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Well, it just, what it said when I tried to um, <clears throat> start the video, it says, you can't start your video because the host has stopped it. It says the same for me too. Yeah, me too. same thing for me. I have the same issue. Maybe. Maybe the host will allow us in. <laughs> oh, interesting. Can you see my video? Yes, yes. I can see your yes. video. You know, I think that the people who are using photographs are showing up, but those of us who would be live, you know, animated, we're not showing up. Except well, my, mine won't go either, and I'm using a photograph, but if, if I try to put on my live, it won't let me. Oh, interesting. Can you see my live? Yes, yes, you can see yes. your Phil. Yes. Yes. You're That's the only one. You're the star. <laughs> Are you the host by any chance? Uh, I'm not. Okay. I, 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 is, is it Re, um, Remy? Oh, Remy's probably yeah. the host. Remy. <laughs> Sorry, that's very strange. I don't know why, why I would be doing that. I'm not sure I care, but... Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I um. I mean, I'm. 
if we can't figure it out, I'm going to go ahead and mute my video so nobody has to look at me. Um, no, no, that's you, but, it's good to have somebody to look at. Yeah. <laughs> no, you. I, too I don't bad, think so. too bad. You draw the short straw. <laughs> that works. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. We need to have some kind of oh. presence. It's better to see each other. <laughs> Who is the host here? That would be me. <clears throat> and no. you don't see any reason I'm why. Not, the... Yeah, I don't know why I would be doing that. All right. While while we're waiting here, uh, another technological problem is that Kay and I had a rough draft of the walking tour map, and we're told to send it to the HRC at charlottesville.org um, or .gov, which we did, but apparently it did not go through. I tried twice actually. Oh. Um, and so I've just sent it to Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Right. And um, I'll, I'll send it out to everybody. I'll see what I can make happen. Okay. It could be that we're just not authorized to do it and we didn't know it. I mean, that's what Robert suggested. We use that email, but he will be, um, he'll be back next week. So we'll, everything will be okay no. again. Is, <laughs> where's Robert? Oh. Uh -huh. Is this different than what you sent at 7.53 this morning? Yeah, that was, a, yeah, that, right. Did it come up through? I have something, yeah. I haven't had a chance to look at it because I've been in meetings all morning, but yeah, I have something from you at 7.53 a.m. Yeah, Same okay, here. that might have been the first or the second one, but um, okay, well, it came to no. you. It didn't come to me. It didn't come to Kay. I, I think it's probably because it's such a large file, it wouldn't go out through the city's distribution list. It only went to people who were directly addressed. Oh. It got, I got it fine. So mm -hmm. we can, we yeah, we can work on sending it out or um, okay. just I, for today. Just it again, so just Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, if like whoever has the ability to share their screen um, can do that. Okay, I mean, it's just really, a, we're gonna talk about it more generally, but yeah. um, it would be nice to have something to look at. Yeah, we were trying to get it out earlier. You know, I don't even see myself on the screen with the rest of you. I feel like I'm talking. No, I see your name, Kay. Yeah, I don't even yeah. see my name. Um, I see your name. I yeah. know, <laughs> I'm, anonymous, I'm anonymous to myself. You're not a ghost, Kay, you're not yeah. a ghost. We are, we are Schrodinger's cat, you know, are we here or not? You know, yes, yeah, right. <laughs> this is the okay. new world, people. That's right. Hey, check, check your email and see if that uh, just okay. came through. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I call this meeting of the Historic Resources Committee for January 2022 to order. Uh, let's start off with a, um, a roll call of everyone's here. Um, Remy, do you, do you have a list of everyone? Um, Robert usually does this. If not, I can pull up a list real quick. Um, I, uh, I do not. Okay. Give me one second to pull that list up. We could just... We could just read the ones on the on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else who's not here? I, I mean, I think I know who everybody's here. I, it's just hard to come up with uh, everybody's name on the spot. <laughs> right. Who isn't here? Um, so, in terms of who isn't here, um, um, Jessica was is unable to attend today, um, and I think that's actually it. Okay, so um, I'll just try to go by the by the screen. Um, I am obviously here. Um, Kay, I'm here. Uh, Sally, she's on. Uh, she, Sally's going to be driving today, so she um, may cut in and out, and uh, um, may <laughs> unmuting maybe a little bit more of an issue. Okay, um, Margaret O'Brien, here. Um, Richard Wilson. Here. Uh, Here. Dee Dee Smith. Here. Genevieve Keller. Here. Jeff Warner. Here. And Jelaine Schmidt. Here. And if I'm not mistaken, Jessica 
is the only person who, Jessica and Robert are the only people who are not here. Okay, um, and with that, uh, I guess the first thing to start off with is the approval of the agenda. Um, did anybody have any uh, changes or uh, comments about the agenda? Uh, could I add an item to the agenda? Please do. Um, I'd, I'd like to add consideration of an ex officio uh, appointment to the committee uh, by Tom Chapman of the Historical Society. Great, I was also gonna bring that up. Okay, um, great. Yeah, um, and then additionally to that, um, anybody else who possibly um, we should consider for ex officio uh, membership. Um, let's add that to the agenda after the walking tour map uh, work session. Um, Can I, um, and I'm sorry, I'm, I, I haven't pulled it up, uh, but do we have welcoming uh, uh, Richard Wilson? That's I guess we don't have a welcoming of that. Um, we should uh, we should probably do that. Um, let's uh, let's do that at the very beginning after the approval of the meeting notes. Yeah. Okay. So with, with those two changes uh, to the agenda, um, could I get a motion to approve the agenda? If nobody else has any additions. So moved. Second. Okay. And please indicate. Um, approval of the agenda with um, some signal. Yes. 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 Right. yes. Good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, next on to public comment. Um, Remy, uh, if you are able to see if there are any, pan uh, any attendees who um, wish to yes. make a comment. Yes, if you'd like to speak at this time, please click the raise hand icon in your Zoom webinar. If you're joining us via telephone, you can press star nine. Each uh, speaker will be given two minutes to speak. Bill, I'll just, uh, uh, Zoe and Paige are, you see them on the screen, uh, are uh, UVA students who are uh, spending a, a couple of weeks here at NDS. Um, so they're sitting in uh, just to listen. So uh, we can maybe have them introduce themselves as well when we Kidding. Yes, sorry, I had to I had to move rooms. A water main broke in front of my house this morning and they're <laughs> pulling the large hole back in. So um uh yes, uh let's um let's do that. It looks like there's no public comment. Um so let's um let's do the approval of the meeting notes and then we can introduce everyone um in one uh one segment. Um for the meeting notes, did anyone have uh, any comments or additions to the meeting notes that Robert sent out? Uh, Phil, there was one place on page two in the description of uh, what Maureen Spokes had added to the uh, uh, discussion. Uh, There's just a mistake in the minutes. I, uh, I think it's made clear, but it does say uh, she joined the call to express interest in working with HRC, <clears throat> excuse me, especially to host. It says Maureen spokes for a lecture, but I think that means to host Ann Bailey for the oh. lecture. <laughs> correct, yes, correct. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that catch. I read that and did not even notice it. Okay, um, so with that, we can like, get Robert to make that modification. I'll take care of it. Is there any other comments on that? Okay, hearing none, um, could I get a motion to approve the meeting notes? So moved with the amendment cited. Second. Okay, um, Dee <clears throat> makes the motion and uh, Margaret seconds. Um, please indicate, um, your uh, support for approval of the meeting notes uh, with uh, visual or sound indication. Yes. 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 Any, oppo any opposed? I was absent. If you want me to abstain, I will. Yes, that would be great. I think it's required, but I wasn't. I think it is. Yeah, it is required. Then I abstain. 
<clears throat> okay. Um, this is a lot harder without being able to see everyone. Yes. Um, okay, so let's move on to the uh, the next item in the amended agenda of, I guess, general introductions. Um, uh, I guess to start off with, uh, I'd like to welcome Richard Wilson to the committee um, as appointed by council um, last month or this month. Um, anyway, thank you. <laughs> yeah, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, briefly describe your interest in working with HRC? Well, I am, uh, I've lived here in Charlottesville for about 48, 49 years, taught for about 200 years at the University of Virginia, uh, architectural history, uh, have written a lot on, you know, who lives on top of the hill up there, but also on Virginia architecture. I did the big guidebook to uh, Virginia architecture for Society of Architectural Historians and other things. And so I'm very interested in uh, the local stuff. Great, thank you very much. It's great to have you on the committee. Uh, Jeff, I, you, I'll pass it over to you if you want to um, introduce Zoe and Paige and let them discuss a little bit about their interest and in what, what they're joining us for. Well, they, were, they did a good job uh, on Monday, uh, very quickly uh, introduced themselves. So I, I will let them do that, Zoe and Paige, if, if, um, if you are there uh, chime in and just you know for the two of you that these are these are individuals who in, in your work at the a school you'll certainly uh, a lot of them you should get to know and, and probably quite a few get to know very well uh, so if you want to speak up now's your chance hi my name is zoe larive i'm a fourth year undergraduate in the urban planning program double majoring in government um, thank you for having us today I'm very excited to see how meetings like this go. Hi, I'm Paige. Um, I'm a first year graduate student. I'm doing a dual degree in planning and landscape architecture. Um, my undergrad's in dance and environmental policy. I'm interested in more of the design aspects of planning and with like an environmental uh, focus. Great, thank you. It's great to have you here. Okay, uh, let's move on to the engagement of the descendant community for Court Square Slave Auction Block site. Um, I think the primary thing we have to work on this today is to plan the progress report for City Council. Um, I had a re we had originally hoped to be on the agenda for um, the pre meeting in. Uh, I guess Monday's meeting, um, which now with the weather may not even happen, um, but we've instead been scheduled for the February uh, meeting um, since there's quite a lot in at the beginning of this new council to get through. Um, so we're going to have a few minutes um, in the February 17th. I, I can't recall exactly when the, the, the meeting is right now, but... Um, in it's the, either seventh or twenty second. Yeah, I so yeah, I combine those apparently to uh, somewhere in the middle. Um, <laughs> but um, um, I have the I have the date uh, from the clerk in in my email, and I will um, I'll, I'll notify everybody about that. I believe it's the, the second one. Um, so we I we should have another meeting before then. But I I'd, I'd like to get at least the broad strokes of what we want to communicate to council down um, so that we can get that progress report together. Um, I started work on that and hope to get something out to everyone before this meeting and haven't been able to. Um, so I'll, and it's, we can't actually really share anything right now um, through, um, through the meeting. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll just start off by talking about the broad strokes of that. Um, the three things that I thought we would focus on were um, the descendant engagement specifically and talking about how uh, we were, a primary focus of that was to um, build trust and um, build a community around this. Um, a few of the difficulties of doing that in 
pandemic and not being able to have in-person meetings, but also the benefits of having virtual sessions, such as engaging people who don't live in the area. And then that's one of the, the benefits that we've seen from those virtual engagement sessions. Um, a summary of uh, their comments so far, the two most important um, being that they want something significant and that there needs to be an educational component. Um, Jelaine, did, did you have any additions to those sort of broad areas of um, summary? Yeah, that, that's, that's a nice kind of thumbnail sketch of what we've heard from descendants so far. Um, uh, what I think what we need from council is kind of a, a charge and, and a budget. I mean, is, is some, you know, or, or some sort of time frame because we uh, were feeling like uh, it's not right to kind of string people along, you know, in kind of endless uh, community engagement meetings without uh, some sort of structure around. It. I mean, it was good uh, so far. That was a good first step in order to kind of gather input that was necessary um, in our to begin. But going forward, um, we would kind of want to have um, council's blessing and, you know, some some sort of budget, I guess, to work with or some sort of plan or time frame, you know, for uh, for thinking about this and, and further coordination. Um, uh, in terms of kind of further community education, uh, I've been talking with the library staff and um, Catherine Fay and David Plunkett. Um, we're being connected with them. They're uh, in charge of the um, programming at the main branch of the um, of the public library here in town. Um, and we're looking at the possibility of, of having a march, uh, um, a, a talk by Dr. Ann Bailey about um, uh, slave auctions, you know, in, in, in U.S. history. She's, you know, kind of the expert on this, particularly on the one in Savannah, the weeping time, um, and how that might inform our process. So I think, you know, to kind of like invite uh, council and, and, and community members at large, you know, to be, um, you know, to be learning together, I guess, about this uh, would be important. And, and to kind of uh, point to this, this, uh, upcoming talk as, as a place where uh, we can all kind of learn together. Great. Um, yeah, and then I think you, you, you touched on the next, the next place I was going, which is, um, you know, the, the sort of outcome that we're looking for from council um, with, you know, reflecting engagement, but also just the general direction of in future of this project um, in, in needing to have a budget and a time frame and a commitment to a hard commitment to actually do something significant um, so that we can then more fully um, engage descendants without um, you know sort of being stuck in this loop of of uh, of just continually going back to descendants without actually moving forward on anything. Um, I, I think this is what you're saying, but it would. I think it would be helpful that if uh, in the in any charge from council, it would specifically state that we would work with descendants and descendant groups, and that that would be a priority, because that would um, clarify the situation that we have vis-a-vis -vis descendants and advocates. Okay. Um, yeah, I think one of the, the, the things I had in mind to specifically talk about was the, um, well, I guess it's called the rubric, but the, um, the engaging descendant communities document um, and how that sort of structures descendant engagement as, as, um, as making the descendants the, uh, making them the, I guess the drivers of anything that um, happens and sort of centering their desires. Um, is that what you're getting at? Uh, yes, and I think that this is, this is one of probably several unique circumstance, circumstances where uh, we, the city, others would want to preference descendants um, because actually that has affected 
their their families' lives and fortunes and legacies <laughs> from that point forward, uh, as opposed to other forms of advocacy and uh, people talking about generational connections with a certain history or a site. I think it, for this particular instance, it would be very helpful because we're not even really clear about the history of the first plaque that's known to have been yeah. associated with that with that site. Um, so I think if if council would specifically charge us to work with uh, known and believed descendants um, of the auction process, that would be really helpful. And we're getting more information about about uh, um, the the sales that took place there in Court Square, you know, and um, you know we we have you know already some you know known descendants, but that list could be growing, you know, as these graduate students, um, history graduate students from UVA, continue their their work there. Yeah, I, I could and suggest I the, the next thing I want to discuss a little bit more is the research aspect of it. Um, Cable, you had your hand. So, yes, um, what I wanted to suggest is that uh, prior to that, what we might do uh, prior to your speaking is be able to uh, sort of speak on maybe some of the research that the students have done to kind of make it real mm -hmm. to the council. And also, I think we should look at um, what kind of budget we would want going into this next year, uh, because this is when the council is planning their budget. So if there's a budget for our planning aspect of it, we need uh, to be able to say that. And we need to sort of say our own charge that we want, which hopefully they will endorse, but I, I think we need to come to it with that. They're not gonna think of a charge. And that, um, you know, then we would be assuming that this is a planning year, we would be looking to the next, uh, potentially to the mm -hmm. next capital budget before we would be, you know, adding a capital uh, expenditure. Yeah, I think what, at the last meeting, we had a little bit of discussion on this. And I think where we came out on that was that because we're unclear about what engagement we're actually going to be able to do in the next year, that the HRC's budget was more than sufficient to cover whatever that is. Um, and that it would be a little bit difficult for us to ask for general operating funds for something that has no scope and we have no idea what exactly we would be doing. Um, whereas we, we do, we have uh, accrued quite a bit in our account um, over several years that we could we could spend on that and um, you know that that seemed to be an appropriate use of our funds. Well, that's okay. I I, I didn't mean to re go through this. I just you had said that we would be yeah. talking to them about the charge and the budget, and I'm saying I think we should be saying uh, if we want any additional budget, then we should say that uh, if we know what we want our charge to be, we should be presenting that charge to them. Right. Yeah. And then the second part of that was that we we do know that the the descendants have said they wanted something significant. And in order to do something significant, there's likely going to need to be uh, funds allocated to it over a number of years um, and also possibly uh, seek out funds from the county since you know this project is much larger than just Right. Um, you know, much larger than just a single location in the city. Um, and so, so a allocating a chunk of money from, or requesting that, uh, that, that some money be allocated uh, from the SIP um, this year and in continuing years that will go towards um, funding a significant. <laughs> I think we may have missed the time for the SIP, but you know, because, but it, yeah, it, it, sorry, I don't have a, I don't see a hand or anything. Um, just, just quickly, yeah, that the budgets moved forward for this year. So it looks like typically in September, they start asking that's when things start flying about the next um, year. So that's that in mind. But 
I, I see three things. One is um, we, we can, you all are, can determine, you know, your scope of work as far as you know, research, things like that. So I think, you know, the way to approach it with council is a, to update them on what you're doing and incorporate that into your summary. The second piece is that I think the, the best way to facilitate a, a, a design discussion is you may offer to city council that when a, when a RFP is issued, uh, the, the HRC will help facilitate a discussion with the descendant community. And then the third thing would be that a recommendation uh, that funds be allocated or considered or something be forwarded uh, to move that, that um, park design or whatever, uh, if it's something separate, to move that process forward. So, so I think, yeah, as far as research goes, you all are, you have, um, you don't need a charge from council as far as, as I see it um, to do the homework. Um, so just throwing that in there. Hey, Jelaine. Yeah, um, I'm wondering, I think we'd said that we have, we HRC have a, another, a meeting in February before um, the, we would be um, presenting to council. Is, do I understand correctly? Um, so I looked it up. We we have a spot on February seventh. Although if we wanted to, we could right. probably push that to the next um, meeting. Um, and our next HRC meeting is the eleventh. So okay, all seven. right. Because I was wondering if we could put on the agenda um, to get a kind of report on work in progress from the researchers, if that could be on our um, agenda for next month. Yeah, so were you, we can do that. Uh, were you thinking that we would want to delay the report to council until after that or not? Hmm. I don't know. What do folks think? Yeah, I, I asked um, Madeja and Jake for mm -hmm. just a like brief summary of what they've done. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, I literally asked for three sentences and got, got quite a bit more of good information. <laughs> um, um, but enough that uh that we can actually like report back the yeah i mean to me it, it's a good indication that there's been meaningful progress mm -hmm. uh, from the research that they're doing um and we can i i i thought that we would include that in the in the report okay well you know maybe yeah <clears throat> since there was significant written materials that that you've already um received, then maybe we could go ahead and, and you know, go to council, you know, and, and just, you know, kind of include that with a packet or whatever, you know, yeah. the, like my report that I, the summary report that I wrote about the descendants, you know, could be included. And then, you know, um, so we could, we could do that. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I mean, I think that one of the, one of the things that I had in mind with this was that it's really just, uh, it's ju really just trying to set expectations. Yeah. Uh, so that in, when it, whenever we we do do the final in summer or fall or who knows with how things are going um that it's not surprising given possible misconceptions about what the purpose of this project was um mm -hmm. and it's, it's mostly just setting expectations and and giving a, a almost just a taste of the research and the results um um jenny you have your hand up. It, it seems to me it'd be good form to report to council sooner rather than later and, and to return later when we have more complete information because this is an issue that right. continues right. to be the subject of uh, media right. reports and letters to the editor and social media and all of those kinds of things. So I think it would be good to, to, to air this in the, in the public and then to say, we're continuing to work on this and we'll come back when we have more complete information. Um, right, and, and, and you know. The, 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 it's very urgent in the minds of some people and the fact that we're working on it just isn't quite good enough. And also we have a new council, so it would be good to have everybody briefed and on the same page. Yeah. Right. And that was, I mean, um, uh, Councilor Pinkston is in the, uh, in the attendees now. Um, and, you know, he and Mr. Wade have, uh, um, have possibly not been in, as closely engaged with us because they weren't previously on council. And I think just, you know, getting a, um, getting a baseline set of expectations about, you know, what this is doing um, compared to sort of some of the, the other um, 
the other things that have been out there. I think it's the, the important aspect of it. Um, so I, I had intended that we would probably have a page or two of text that would describe um, where we are. Um, the we only I think we've only gotten ten minutes on the the schedule, so that's mostly for you know a very brief summary and then any questions about what we're doing, um, and then possibly providing some other interesting information that we found and know about um, to council in case anybody wants to look a little bit deeper um, mm -hmm. at what's there. And and I had one other point that I wanted to make, and maybe it doesn't really conform to what you asked for in this period, but I don't know where else to put it. I would <laughs> like to see us revisit uh, the state marker, which is an odd thing for me to say, because I've never been a big fan of the marker program, but it's kind of low hanging fruit and it could be a pro it could be a, a method that we could use to show progress and concern on, on this issue. And it would be a small enough amount of money that it wouldn't need to go uh, into the capital Im improvements. Um, yeah. So at some point, maybe that's asking for it to be put back on the uh, agenda at some point for us to to look at that because it would go through the state's process and um, given funding that's likely to be available this year uh, that would be a good candidate and yeah. it would be something we could perhaps do jointly with the county committee uh, participants should be able to um, show their video All right, let's try it. Oh, there we go. Right. There we go. We're actually real people. Oh, well. <laughs> Although I still don't see myself. <laughs> oh, well. You're I'm next like, to me, Kay. You're right next to me. Hidden figure. <laughs> we can see you, Kay. <laughs> okay. That may not be a good thing. Great. Um, well, it's wonderful to see you all now. Um, okay, so then I guess the second aspect of that is the research um, aspect. And, you know, I think the thing that's weighs most heavily on me right now with this is the lack of actual evidence for mm -hmm. the, the slave auction block site itself. Um, that I've, you know, I tried to catalog all of this, um, all of the existing information that we know about uh, Court Square. And I've also had um, a pretty extended dialogue with the community member about what evidence we have for um, that site specifically, uh, the Benson Brothers auction rooms at number nothing, and then the Court Square site in general. Um, and we we seem to have a very little evidence of the slave auction block uh, location itself. Um, I don't know if everybody is aware of the sort of historiography of, of that or not. Um, and I can go over that or... Isn't there also a first person memory or account that mentions a bench being on the bench. Yeah, so that is um, that's Fountain Hughes. Um, he in his in the recording that was done mm -hmm. of him in uh, in the forties, forty-seven, forty-eight, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He he specifically recalls um, a bench being put up in uh, in front of the courthouse for and, and sales in front of the courthouse. And Rebecca McGinnis's yeah, interview is yeah. also she. Yeah mentions that her grandmother um kind of you know pointed to i'd have to go back and listen again yeah you know, she so she points to um she recounts her grandmother in um when she was a kid so this is a, a little after 1900 um uh pointing to a stump that was in a court or in front of the courthouse and saying that that's where auctions occurred um and so those are the two first hand or first or uh, um, uh, second. I, a second hand account in which the, the person that I've actually named um, mm -hmm. uh, that we have of things. And then the 
Maria Perkins letter as well right. that she doesn't specify where she just says, she at, she says at the courthouse she says right. you no know, yeah um is a first person account yeah and, and then the, I would like to see us move towards terminology that talks about auction sales transfers and away from a specific object that we can't identify we can't locate and we can't verify yeah, and I think that's the that's the concern I have is that um, you know the the only the only uh, evidence we have or the only anecdote we have of there being a block there prior to 1865 and that it was used for auctions is um, that in in 1906 um, when uh, Mr. Walsh began working as a lawyer in the Number Nothing building. He was he was told by someone that that uh, block was used for auctions, um, and that's the only uh, the only bit of information we have from that. And I think for me, it's particularly interesting that we have numerous other uh, recollections that specifically mention Number Nothing, um, including RTW Duke. Who, if like anybody was, you know, gonna talk about, um, yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he was, he was so proud of, of that, of his his participation in um, the neo Confederate um, cause and the Lost Cause movement, um, and he doesn't mention it or put it on his map, um, and you know, one of the pieces of, one of the things that's been mentioned to me frequently is that it is on this 1828 map um, that exists uh, that actually isn't an 1828 map. It was a map that was created in 1960 um, as a recreation of what somebody thought 1828 would look like. Yeah. Um, and, and that's been cited as a primary piece of evidence. Um, Do we have some, there's something about in the 1920s, the street getting renovated yeah, there and yeah. the block taken away i don't know yeah that's what um even, that's what, even that's a little earlier than that you know. yeah yeah horman walsh talks about that that it was or uh actually i can't remember if it's if he talks about it or mary rawlings talks about it who's recounting walsh's anecdote in 1942 mm -hmm. um she says I, I think she says it was removed sometime after 1906 as okay. part of the street renovation right. Right. Yeah, we even um, checked the old uh, city council minutes to see if there was any discussion of uh, or instruction to do street work or anywhere, and and um, we weren't able to find anything in those minutes. Yeah. And then we have um, we have two, or three, three pictures from the Court Square area that actually have likely what the block that was there looked like. Um, we have two photographs of um um i forget what it's called now um the the, 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 the monticello hotel bell eagle eagle yeah where the eagle tavern was but i forgot what it's called now or what it was called then uh, um, eagle hotel also uh, colonial hotel, no, colonial hotel, hotel perhaps. Perhaps. um yeah we have two photographs from there that show us very similar um a carriage block and there's actually a carriage in front of it in one of the pictures which is yeah. um, you know sort of a, a good indication and then I was actually able to find another photograph that's actually of um of the catholic church uh that you can see another uh curbstone in in the background um so you know we have some good idea of like what of those curbstones okay. existing um and you know going going I was I I I have gone through numerous newspaper articles and you know have been un unable to find any mention of that um, and I think that's particularly interesting given where the Fredericksburg mm -hmm. um, slave auction block ended up um, because for a while there was you know a lot of contention about like what should be done with it what was the history of it um, and probably the most uh, the most dispassionate analysis that I've seen of the historical evidence was that it was primarily a um, a horse or carriage block, but was frequently used for auctions. Mm -hmm. um, that they have evidence that um, 
you know, well, I mean, the fact that it is still there or was still there, I can't actually remember what they Until did. Until a couple of years ago. Yeah, um, that it was still there. Um, uh, they found numerous uh, uh, advertisements for uh, for auctions that occurred at that exact site, that it was, you know, the auction is occurring in front of the hotel and it was clearly um, at the spot that the auctions were occurring, um, you know, which we, we haven't we haven't found. Um, uh, I will say one other related thing is I did find an, uh, find a newspaper ad for an auction that included enslaved individuals occurring at the Benson Brothers auction rooms at number nothing. We, prior to that, we didn't actually have any, um, any advertisements for auctions occurring there. Um, the one example in Schumann was for mm -hmm. March 6th, uh, 1865, which would not have happened as the city was liberated a few days prior. Um, so I actually did find a, an ad that for an auction that likely occurred at that spot. Um, so we do have good, good evidence for um, the Benson brothers having auctions at, at number nothing uh, now. You know, if there was a, if there, if there had been a block or a bench or whatever, it could also be that the auctioneer stood on it to be seen and heard by the crowd. It may have had multiple uses. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it being, being old enough to have spent a childhood, you know, trailing various relatives to auctions on Virginia farms and various places, it was kind of informal, messy process. I mean, they weren't slave auctions, but they were auctions in a kind of traditional Virginia country way. So I think that, um, you know, I think the open question we have, um, you know, I think we've been moving towards expanding this out from solely focusing on the slave auction block site to more broadly, um, the fact that the courthouse itself was the site of a majority of the auctions, that it was the site of the, um, you know, the site that all the property records went through and, and has that history um, to it. And then also more generally in Albemarle that all the estate auctions that occurred. Um, so I guess, you know, the question is like how, how do we frame the auction block site itself? What do we say about that? How do we expand, you know, how do we, what, what's the proper frame for this? What's the proper name for what we're trying to do? Um, what, are, what, are, what, you know, what are we, where do we sort of constrain, constrain what we're doing? It seems like the most verifiable thing to do is to talk about it as the uh, Benson auction house site. That's the one thing that we know that it was really there. We have documentation for that. And, and we know that that was um, one, of their, one of their types of transactions. So that we know that there were enslaved auctions held at that site and by that company. And, and then other interpretation could be more broad that's dealing with the process. Uh, Didi, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, uh, it just seems to me in this discussion, this would be a great question to ask the descendants. <laughs> would they, how do they feel about the uh, memorial or you know the recognition, the marker, whatever it is, the uh, exhibit that we do being at just one site that we know is not the only site, but maybe that's preferred <laughs> or um, are the, do the descendants have any more interested in representing it as for its reality, which is that it was at a lot of sites. That just seems like a good descendant question. Hey, do you wanna go ahead? Yes, I, I wanted to say, I think, I'm sorry, I can't remember who told me this. I thought it was one of the people who was doing research, but um, so it's both a comment and a question. Who, uh, it was someone who was doing some research on this and said that a lot of the records seem to indicate 
not specific uh, auction house or whatever, but courthouse, like it was occurring on the courthouse. I wondered if any of the records, and we could ask the students this, I don't need an answer now, but just if any of the records that they are looking at, what they indicate about place of sale, because to me, that that's one of the reasons to do the research is to see what it might uh, show up about um, where the sales were heard. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, their preliminary, just some of what they've said to me and Phil, you can um, jump in here if, if you remember this, is that there wasn't, at least in the records they're looking at, it didn't always specify the where. You know, these are kind of like, you know, estate sales and, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And, and it, it, it didn't always say where. I mean, it was, you know, a certain person's estate that was located in this place, you know, but it, yeah, it didn't always say. Um, but we do have some specific records specifically from, yeah, Mr. Fountain, you know, Fountain Hughes and, and Rebecca McGinnis and other people about the courthouse that mentioned the courthouse. Yeah, that's right. Um, um, I forgot exactly what Medeja uh, wrote, but it was basically indicating the same thing that there were very few that said. And then occasionally, in the in the um, in the case of a of, of I guess a for sale to settle debts or something like that, it would say like as as more of an aside to be sold in front of yeah. the courthouse. Yeah, right. That was. Mm -hmm. You might want to be a little careful that when uh, people of your said courthouse, they didn't mean that very generally as court square. That it, that it was actually very specifically the courthouse. I mean, I'm just saying that. I don't I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was my understanding. From, from a lot of the phrasing, it's like specifically saying like in front of the courthouse or like, and, and you know, the, 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 um, the accounts that we have, you know, indicate that. Okay, I will, um, I will continue to try to write this up and send something out to everyone um, that we can review and, uh, and then, um, have for a report to council next month. Kate, okay, did you have something else to say? You have your hand up, but I'm not sure if that was just not, okay. <laughs> okay, there, oh. Hey, Jeff, did you have something to say? Yeah, I, I just want to say, you know, we've, um, it, I think it's the getting that, that summary that, you know, present the evidence that, that's been found, I think it's really, um, um, is really helpful. I think it, it, you know, there's a lot of, of myths and legends in this town, and I think it's it's an opportunity for this one to, to to really express what the committee has found as the larger the larger picture of what was going on at Court Square. Um, but with that, um, I, I, we've talked about it for for a couple of years, and I've never really come down on what what would we what would the committee. Um, recommend um, so there's the um I, I just want to maybe narrow that down so that when you're talking to council this is generally what they'll say is well what are you asking us and so um there's clarify that in jenny's comment about possibly doing a a uh, a marker uh a something and and where would it be located and why um is that where we are with with this uh, recommendation to council I don't think we are. We know where we're, we are okay. right now. I, I think we still have a lot of a lot of work to do, um, and we okay. don't need to be there yet. I think that's the important. That's fine. That's fine. Like we're we're right now. We're just setting expectations and you know giving an idea of what what the outcome is um, instead of actually like saying here's what the outcome is. And I, and I think it'll be really helpful. Um, you know, I've been having conversations for some time with uh, the new assistant city managers who are dealing with the, that question on other levels and just being able to share with them this larger story, this, you know, what's going on. I think being able to put that in front of council uh, will have, be of tremendous value just to kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's a venue to express the story that people maybe not realize. So, all right. Yeah, Julian. 
Yeah, um, I'm wondering if also at this February meeting where there's this kind of report on research in progress by the, by the researchers, uh, can we also <clears throat> invite members of the count of our county counterparts out there to come to this meeting so that they can can hear this, you know, especially as we're talking about, you know, this, this is something that it, it's more than just the city, especially since it concerned the courthouse, you know, and of course the county is going to be working on its own, you know, on this, this overhaul, you know, uh, uh, and, and to what degree that, it, you know, includes the city is, you know, we're still kind of mumbling through that, I think, but to have them present for this conversation. So to kind of like, get them up to speed so you know so that we're kind of like thinking about this together you know what i mean so that they're not being kind of pulled in later or something like that i think it would be nice to to have them here and i don't even know who those people are um that that would be uh invited in or even how active uh that committee is out there but it would be good to have somebody some some kind of official representation from the county i think to invite them at least to be present yeah, the counties, um, I forgot what they call their HRC, um, but they are they are very active. Um, and I, if, if you think that it's it's a good time to bring them in, then I, I think, think so, just so they can be hearing this and especially, you know, so, so that they can be clued into their own, you know, process out there, the county, you know, as, as they're um, um, renovating the, the county courthouse land. And then we can start kind of thinking together and then maybe we could have, you know, kind of more to, to go with, you know, maybe it's like, oh, well, you know, maybe that corner, I mean, there's been some, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know what they're going to say about that, but there's, you know, that Monticello uh, plaque kind of that's at the corner of, 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 of Park and Jefferson is, you know, uh, maybe it's, you know, something else might go there. I don't know what they're thinking, you know, yeah. in terms of, in terms of that, you know, but, but just, you know, think in terms of the yard yeah yeah and, and i think that's time exactly. to meet with them uh, excuse yeah. me i i read that they have uh recently uh appointed a new super uh, a different supervisor to that committee i think mm -hmm. they're doing some reorganization mm -hmm. and liz russell who works for monticello is on that committee so mm -hmm. there's also that link with the, mm -hmm. the Mon monticello uh marker so I, and we haven't met with the county in probably five years and not for a really long time. And we used to meet annually. Um, so I, I think that's a wonderful suggestion. I, I'd like to see that as a motion that we try to get that going and deal with this collectively as one, as one community. And do we just someone from their committee or do we also invite a, a, one of the supervisors as well, like whoever is assigned to that? I mean, do we kind of kick it up a notch as it were, you know, because, you know, we have Brian Pinkston here. I don't know if he'll be here next month, but, you know, to, so that there's some sense of, I don't know, buy-in, you know? I think that that's above my level, but I mean, I guess I would start with a joint committee meeting just to say, this is something we've been dealing with. We've been meeting with descendants and, uh, you know, is this something you're interested in collaborating with us on? I agree about a joint committee meeting. I think that's a good idea. Okay, we should we should investigate that. Then um, we can. And who, that. I don't know who the person is. I mean, Phil as chair yeah, of HRC. Are you gonna? Yeah, I'll, I'll I will I will find out what the right way to. Okay. Do. All right. I think they have a new chair. I believe their long term chair has stepped aside, but I do not know who the new chair is. Okay. Um. Okay, that was, uh, that was a good discussion there. Um, and then I guess the third thing for the report is um, reiterating that uh, any, we, we won't be, you know, I guess, necessarily giving precise recommendations, um, but that part of the process is to do more like an ideation process to um, have ideas that we think are important that could be incorporated that come from descendants that come from outside places, other ways that, that memorializations have been done um, and just sort of include those as possibilities, but not as a, you know, a definite plan and also locations. Uh, Julian, you brought up earlier, I think something that's important to sort of get on the table now that having the corner of the space in front of the courthouse where the Monticello sign is now is you know a, a very, uh, important location because it's right in front of the courthouse 
and is a very historically accurate location um, for memorialization. Or perhaps where Johnny Reb used to be. But I right. mean, that's kind of, you know, that's their land. So that's kind of up to them, you know. Right, but, right. but I, I had heard, I don't know, you know, how official this, you know, that maybe the Monticello markers, I don't know, you know, they're pulling up a lot of stuff, I think, you know, to kind of, and then start going yeah. again. I don't know. Yeah. And if we do a state marker, then DHR and VDOT enter into considerations about locations, which is one of the reasons I wasn't really in favor of it in the first place. But given that there is that one there now, it, this might just be the most expedient way to, to move, move forward. So just, you know, for, to help. Um, yeah, that is um, the county um, it is, is in the city, but it's a county parcel that, that square where the county courthouse building is located. Um, we can uh, install, we can, if you're talking about a state marker or, or a local marker, somewhat like we did at um, um, uh, Daughters of Zion Cemetery, that can be installed within the city right of way and the permission is granted by the city manager. So uh, so in the, in the county, for example, uh, DHR would coordinate a location with VDOT within the state right of way. In the city, it's different. So it's, it's if the uh, city manager says it's okay to put it there, then the, the state will okay uh, that as the location of the marker. So we do a little bit more leeway in that than, um, than, a, than a county would, if that helps. Yeah, and then I, the, I think the concerns I have with the state marker are um, one, I'm not sure right now what we would actually be memorializing um, or indicating um, given that we're in the middle of research and, and also that we're giving away some local control uh, to the state and they're gonna put up what, you know, they have final say on what actually is on the marker versus, you know, I think a desire, I, I, I at least have the desire and I think a lot of people have the desire to have local control of that um, so that we can say exactly what our community feels should be said. You know, this is just a brainstorm here, but what if we what if we put together a, a, a court square map that's printed up, that's available. We have those, um, those descriptions. We can locate them on a map. So it's not something permanent, but it's certainly something folks could use if they, they wanted to experience that site relative to where these things occurred. Um, so it would be probably simple to produce. Um, again, not permanent. It would opportunity to, to, to add uh, more to the story and, and even you know maybe encourage some input. I don't know, just throwing that out there. I wonder why we didn't think of it. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, one thing I wanted to just throw in because it occurred to me is you know, the statue of Stonewall Jackson is removed. That whole park, what is its future gonna be? I know that originally Jeff talked about the park that's gonna be created over near the Levy Opera House, but this is right adjacent to, um, you know, to the courthouse. And I just think we ought to keep that in mind um, as one of those transitional spaces right now um, that we could, just think about how it might be used. And if I can say something here, um, the Jefferson School is going to start um, holding a series of community engagement meetings about uses of public space, um, you know, for some months, you know, going ahead here. And these are gonna be facilitated conversations with the Institute for, um, um, what do you call it, engagement, you know, that Frank, Frank Dukes is um, outfit, you know, there at UVA. And so this is gonna be a facilitated conversation. Um, and so, and there should be, a, you know, after this series of meetings over several months, there's gonna be a report um, that, that is, is, is written up that just kind of collects, you know, um, what, what's been said and then um, given to council. So this, you know, is something that, that there's going to be conversation about public space, just in a very general way, you know, just kind of, you know, what are people thinking? I mean, kind of modeled on the memorial to enslaved laborers process, uh, community engagement process that, that occurred, you know, so anyway, so that is to say there is going to be um, a lot of meetings and a lot of thinking going on in the next several months about public space generally. 
not not focused on on like just the former side of the Jackson Monument, but just kind of you know. That's that's good because that I mean that can help inform that. Yeah. Idea process yeah like, just wanted to tell yeah that there is a mechanism what, yeah. yeah that in this case it's it's sponsored by the jefferson school and and facilitated by frank dukes and and um going to council you know just keep in mind there is a parks and rec advisory board if parks come into it mm -hmm. okay um does anybody else have any comments to close that agenda item up K is her hand up, and maybe it's still left up. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was left up. Um, okay, uh, let's take a five minute recess and we'll come back and talk about the map. Uh, we'll reconvene at uh, 12 08.
Okay, we'll get started again in a minute. Okay, we are a whole two minutes ahead of schedule right now. So. Okay, I guess uh, D and K, do you want to talk about the downtown walking tour map now? Sure, I'm not sure Kay's back yet. Um, I wanted to take just a few minutes, particularly for um, those who have not been here prior, uh, just to talk real quickly about the process that brought us to this point and to our design. Um, I think, I hope, Jeff, that did come through for me. The, um, and the first two pages of the attachment that Jeff just sent uh, are, is the uh, prototype from our designer, where Ann Chestnut is our um, designer. And the way we got there was uh, we started out with a spreadsheet. And this was actually now a few years ago with a different committee, a different set of characters, basically. Um, and what we did from the get go was to put, um, of course, what we're doing is we is replacing the old downtown walking tour. We're changing it. Um, so we put all the sites from the old downtown walking tour into a spreadsheet. Um, and then we just started adding to it with a charge of making it more inclusive, more inclusive of, of particularly African-American history. Um, and then, um, and then uh, we added some of the sites that are in the historic Charlottesville tour book that the Historic Resources Committee did in conjunction with the Historical Society, um, gosh, about 20 years ago, but it had more sites. So we just put, we just loaded up this spreadsheet full of sites and then put a date, if there was a date associated, you know, 1874, whatever, um, an address, uh, at what part of the tour that site was in, in terms of Port Square, downtown, Water Street, Market Street. Those were basically our three or four um, major uh, geographic areas. And then since then we've added the Vinegar Hill area. Um, put that in the spreadsheet and then uh, the address so it could be mapped. Um, and, oh, and then the important thing is then for, for some reason, just started categorizing them. Actually, we started doing that from the get-go. Does this have to do with commerce? Does this have to do with transportation? Just trying to see how things grouped up. And um, then we called it down to something semi-manageable, but it was still a lot of sites and sent that on to the, the designer wanted to see something. And that's what we sent to the designer. And <laughs> boom, we, we met with the designer too. But and sort of got on this thematic theme, um, a thematic approach, uh, and then that's what that's how we got the prototype. So just so you know, um, she came up with a design. I think we uh, talked about this last meeting. Everybody seemed to like the design a lot. It is fashioned after two other maps, local maps uh, for the Star Hill and hydraulic neighborhoods, and for the UVA. Um, uh, Mel, I, it's like, and I'm sure it's associated with Mel, but for the African American history um, of enslavement at uh, UVA. So um, that's kind of how we got the prototype. And then Kay and I have been charged with writing the text for it, which has been really, really hard uh, because it's not a lot of words. It's uh, because it's not site-based specifically, um, it's, it's been tricky. We've used a number of resources primarily, again, talked about this last meeting, use the text, you know, just put this in a huge document by site, the text from the old map, the text from the tour book I just referred to that the Historic Resources Committee had put together, um, used the text from historic markers when there was one, used uh, an another actually really good source um, our uh, National Register nominations because they cite so many sources. Um, it's a great way to, you know, when it comes time to cross check uh, and there is gonna need to, to have that happen. Um, there's a lot of sources there. Some of them have um, PALS 
uh, nominations. That was helpful with like um, what is now Market Street Park. And also the panels that this committee did for Court Square. That's only a appropriate to Court Square, but there was tons of information there. Anyway, put <laughs> so, so some of these sites have a lot of different text and uh, we just sort of then started to kind of call it down per site, but then we had to put it into themes and that's why it was so hard. Um, but what you see before you is just a sort of a piece of, of all of this work. We uh, honored, we stuck very close to the prototype, even though the prototype came out of a spreadsheet. So I, I think what I, 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 I know I would like, I'm not sure I, Kay is gonna agree with this, but I would like us to, to keep in mind that, that how that prototype is organized, I think we all like the design of it, is still flexible. And um, whether or not those categories that were in that spreadsheet are the right ones, because that's what landed in the prototype, um, how do we be sure that we include the sites that are on the map in our thematic text? It's it's tricky, but anyway. So, okay, why don't you? Yeah. Add to that? I, so I, I think that's a that's a good summary and background, and I think there are some things that I've noticed, like, you know, what do we do? Uh, I think we want to include churches and uh, the synagogue as sites and we don't, you know, we have to sort of figure out how to do that, uh, how to just kind of put them. What I wanna say about the narrative is that the narrative is really uh, just more minor. Like <laughs> on the on one hand, we want your feedback on, the, on it, but we only have a limited number of words because we try to list as many sites as possible, and then also to have some uh, photos in the in there that will, you know, as people identify these sites, they can look at them um, as they're as they're walking along. So we are thinking about some things in terms of the themes, like maybe we won't, maybe commerce will be absorbed into others. Uh, we could definitely use some. Uh, I was just thinking we could definitely use, maybe Richard could help us on the arts and architecture part. Again, it's got to be so brief and you're trying to talk about all these different architectural styles, uh, you know, just sort of to give people a sense of as you're walking around that you're going to see all these different styles from these different eras. So I think that's, uh, that that's a, you know, an issue. Um, and actually, as I've looked at the list of sites, some of them are just um, wrong addresses and things like that. So we're gonna have to figure that out, even though they came from these other documents. Um, and let's see if there's anything else I wanna say. Uh, I'm sorry that we couldn't get this to, our intent was to get it to you way in advance so you'd have a chance to sort of read read it and look it over and be able to, to um, to give comments at this meeting, but we understand that, I mean, we just we just kept working on it and, and we did the best we could. So I, I think it would be very helpful if people would send us, both of us, you know, questions or, um, or issues that are raised as you look at it, because once we have those in writing, we can kind of go back over it too. And we can certainly come up with something <coughs> at a later time where we can be more of a work session on this. Um, there are some other sites I think we just should have on the map that are not historical necessarily, but that people will locate themselves. And, and I think we need to talk to Anne about how do we do that. Um, and I would also, I'm also think that from the map itself, um, and again, we have to talk to Anne. I think there should be some dates adjacent to many of the, the sites there because that's what people will be looking at. Number 30, what am I seeing? And if it's an 18, it happens to say 1875 bank building, but a lot of, most of them do not um, give you those, those dates. Um, and then I have, uh, I, I think, um, I did wonder, this is a very specific question and maybe it's 
too specific since you're just getting this now. But I do wonder on the theme page of whether we need to have some kind of list somewhere of the sites under the themes. You know, what are the sites like just, uh, again, maybe it would just be the, I guess she did do that. She did that. She did that on, on, on the part of, we didn't do that yet. No, we didn't do that. And, no, and no. I think, that would, I think that, would, that would be good. And we have not done that. And then, as I said, somehow finding a way to get places of worship in with the dates. Um, and then we need to talk to Anne about if there are ways we can change the layout because if you look on the theme page, you know, it has all the little photos across the top and some of these like the first one, African-American heritage and civil rights could go on into the next column. And some of them we don't need as much. In fact, we may subsume some of them like commerce or government or transportation into the others and whether or not we can change the, the layout somewhat. So that's all I have to say for now. Well, and I just like to add that what you, what, one of the reasons it took us so long is we don't want you to think is this is what we think should be on the map today. Um, yeah. It's really was a, a lot of, of going back and forth. You'll see a, a, you'll see a number of different styles. Um, some uh, have very sort of site sites, have name sites. Um, others are very general. It talks, um, some of them talk into, you know, today, I think transportation does that. I think government might do that. Um, and so there, you know, I think we, we would like your feedback as to which, which, what, which kind of style I, I do you think would be most interesting for someone walking on the ground with this map. <laughs> um, and also to note, uh, because most of you know this, but um, some of you don't, uh, that there is a plan to have a, uh, a, some sort of digital tour, whether it's yeah. audio or not, could be an audio tour, could just be a digital tour that would give a, flesh out a lot of this information. But we, you know, what do we put on a map where we have just, you know, a bit of, of language. I also would like to say the sort of big surprise for us that we didn't anticipate when before we saw the prototype and when we first saw it was the map of Vinegar Hill. That, that was the designer came up with that and and her her and I think she just took this from the spreadsheet and then she just put the schools and I, I personally and I again I don't I just want this is my own personal opinion is that's a bit of a waste of this incredibly interesting area. It's a whole map of Vinegar Hill. We've already decided we're gonna ask her to outline where Vinegar Hill was. We talked about that at the last meeting, but there's a lot of potential to talk about uh, neighborhoods, black neighborhoods, about urban renewal, about some of the things we actually touch on down below. I think Kay and I would, we had this little debate, but, um, uh, earlier, but we just decided to, we're just going to go with the, for you, for the sake of today's meeting, just the prototype that we had already looked at, but we could actually um, put more of the African-American theme that's down below up next to that map, because it's really representative of a lot of, um, you know, desegregation. <laughs> the, 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 the things. Anyway, um, you know, those sorts of things, I think we're still flexible uh, on. We're very flexible actually on sort of everything. Um, but sort of the easiest, one of the easiest place of narratives to write were the Court Square, Market Street, Water Street, because you've, uh, you know, you, it's sitting right next to the, the list. Uh, but anyway, that's I'm going on and on. Um, I, I had a list of questions. Um, yeah, just so so as you as you read it and uh, kind of want you to really be thinking about what appeals to you, what doesn't, um, how often we should be citing locations, sites, how important is that, or are we citing look at architecture and you know just look at it. Um, the, the whole idea of how to use a vinegar map, what, and, you know, if you see sites that are missing, we're definitely going to take a few of them out because they're not there <laughs> or they're not relevant or we can't work them in. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. 
And, and then again, do we talk about mo modern amenities when we talk about uh, entertainment, we talk about the theaters and the taverns and the theaters, do we also cite the ones that are modern? Do we cite now and today, you can see that at the pavilion or the, uh, whatever. Um, that kind of thing. But it, as, as you read it, you'll, you'll see there's sort of a lot of those questions in there. I don't know if that's enough to go on. Uh, Richard? Yes, uh, well, if I can just say, Kay uh, mentioned me and uh, being a architectural freak that I am that uses these things for Ever I go, it seems to me that a couple of things really do need to be, and one is the dates, and not to worry about that it all has to be old, that it can be new. Uh, but the second thing is, is that I do think you need to have the architects uh, when we have them. I mean, I think that that's an important thing. And to say, I'll be glad to work, because I've done quite a bit of work on some of this stuff myself, to work with you, but it may be that you're trying to do too much in this one thing and that maybe there needs to be one that is sort of the main street or the mall thing. And then there maybe is another that, I'm sorry, I'm just saying, because I understand you can't have 10 pages here, but the people that are gonna use this, a lot of them are gonna be geeks like me who are gonna to wanna to have this basic stuff what we're looking at here. So anyway, that's just me. I'd love it if you would work with us um, because you clearly have deep knowledge of a lot of, a lot of this. Uh, so personally, I, would, I think that would be great. We did talk about, I mean, another way to organize it. Um, we did it sort of thematically where you're, you know, the theme might cross over into these different areas like Court Square and Downtown Mall. Um, you know, another way to do it would be geographic uh, by column. Uh, that's would just be a different approach. Uh, no, I mean, and I agree, and I'm not saying we can talk about this, but one of the things you just sort of mentioned, but I mean, mm -hmm. that we've got to emphasize is how bloody successful the mall has been. I mean, given the catastrophe that happened across this country when they urban renewalized everything, this is the one place or one of the very few places that's really been successful. And I think that that's a very important element uh, to have in this. I think successful for who though, and it needs to be, I was just involved in this discussion yesterday with Devarian Baldwin you know, and, and, you know, talking about this, yes, there was, you know, the urban renewal that happened. And then now, you know, in the last several decades, the kind of movement back toward the cities, you know, that that's occurred, <laughs> certainly. And this was part of that. It both heralded and facilitated it. That is the development of the downtown mall, you know, this, this, which is something that happened all over the country, Baltimore, Inner Harbor and all over, you know. Um, but I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't want it to just be a, you know, kind of one of, 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 of just blank, you know, celebration. You no, know? no, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. I'm just trying to say that, I mean, obviously you've got the removal of Vinegar Hill on one hand. And at the same time though, a lot of these attempts at malls or mauling the downtown were just total catastrophes. And that this is an interesting example. I'm just saying that that this needs to be mentioned. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just saying that, that in addition to, you know, kind of noting buildings, architects, et cetera, that the, the social landscape that oh, yeah. you know, yeah. was created there is, is important too, because uh, yeah, this downtown mall is yeah, successful for who? Yeah. you know, and um, who is welcome there and not. I just, just don't want to lose sight of that. Right, we have an interesting, with, with the scope of the two maps together, we have some interesting opportunities to talk about specifically urban renewal. I mean, you've got basically three, maybe four neighborhoods that experienced urban renewal in the, you know, history of Charlottesville, you know, McKee Block, Pearl Street, Vinegar Hill, and then you probably could include Garrett. And I don't know if that's inclusive of the map or not. Right, but and as, as Richard said, you know, to, to you know, not only be 
you know, just, you know, ancient history in the past and stuff, but also, you know, in the present, you know, which is, is important. And, and what I'm talking about is th this, it, this, this downtown mall is, it's demarcating space more and more in the present, you know, yes, it brought people down to, but who, you know, and you know, you have certain people advocating for park benches that people can't lay down on. And now we've got the code center going in and, you know, the kind of people were displaced by that or, you know, different gathering spots were displaced by that. So it's just, yeah, it, it's, it's an ongoing thing. I, I like, you know, the emphasis on, you know, it's not only the past, it's ongoing, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's continuing to unfold, but it's unfolding in a certain way for and against certain people. So that really speaks to our time frame, too. If we're can I? Sorry, did you really? Just... I, I have to remind you all: we have limited amount of space, right? And so can we I... try in this to identify the spots, and then in the narrative to say something. So, uh, for example we have talked about in like two sentences about urban renewal, you know, and what's happened, but that's all we have. We can't get into a great long discussion. I, I got that. I'm just saying, just, I wouldn't want it to be this celebratory thing. Oh, it's the, right. it's no, the no. city's living room and stuff. There's stuff going on right now. That, that's, you know, I just don't want it to be this white No, we're not trying to do that. And we are trying to do it for people who are coming, primarily for people who are coming to the city and walking around and looking at things and want to see things. And as uh, Dee Dee pointed out, I think that what we can do with, well, I hope it will actually be an audio tour that we can do additional, is we can go into more things and we can suggest to people places where they might look for more information on various issues and things like that. And, and we want to do that, but um, and, and I get what you're saying, uh, Jeline, totally, but just wanted to remind everybody, this is, you know, in 50 words or less, 200 years, so it's really hard. <laughs> and, you know, and I really encourage, I'm Jeff, I know, sorry, you, I know you I'm want sorry. to say something, but can I just say one thing is that I think that as you read these very rough drafts, see how, which ones of them speak to uh, that, you know, ongoing <laughs> issue and and give us that feedback which ones do you like which ones really no we shouldn't be doing that because there's a lot of different in there um of that of that kind of thing that's what we really like to know it's it's not it's, this is not ready for prime time in any way so and we've lost half the stuff like i i kept looking i had written about the <laughs> about the mall design process in seven, you know, in the seventies and it's not here. So I don't know what happened, but. Yeah, that was one thing I, I, I noticed there about just, just what two words, urban forest, you know, when, when we, you know, that, that, you know, that this vision of the downtown mall, urban forest, you know, that, that, that park, you know, that that was the original vision yeah. which also kind of gets to the present too about how that you know space has been commandeered from what was supposed to be a pedestrian walkway urban forest mm -hmm. to now a kind of commercial space in the middle so, but urban yeah but but urban forest because yeah, wasn't that halperin's language yeah halperin halperin had something like that I, i'm not if, but yes lots of trees so it probably is we would call it an urban forest Richard, do you know do you know much about the Halperin design? Yes, I do. I've yes. I've, I've spent some time on it and so forth, and uh, uh, there is there, there's quite a bit of information available, and I'm sure that Jeff's got the stuff too. I mean, <laughs> that's I yeah. yeah. Poor Jeff. We're we're no well. I I <laughs> was sort of going to tie this one up hopefully and and set set it on the shelf. We have right now, remember, we're working on that um, that first step of, of, of the study of the mall. Everything you guys have talked about has has come up in that discussion. And one of the things I met with Beth Meyer a couple of weeks ago, and she reminded me that I think it's like the 50th anniversary or whatever is coming up in 2026, and that the opportunity is there for us, the Historic Resources Committee, to, to begin to initiate a broader discussion about the mall, its its design, its results, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I just want to say that opportunity is there. It's something we were going to bring to you sooner 
or later. And um, but I think that that gives you all a, a, a means to address the questions that, that are all coming up here. So that sort of as far as what's on the the brief uh, insertion into the map, maybe we can you know keep it generic and and realizing that we're going to get into more details at a later date. If if that helps, that's all I want to offer. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I think the takeaway is uh, we can review that and send comments out to uh, DD and K or the entire group, and um, I expect we'll have some good uh, good discussion on that. Yeah, and okay. that would be really helpful because we we will continue to work on this before our next meeting. So if you can look at it, just anything that you have, whether it's wording or missing concepts, uh, let us know. I mean, the other thing that we did really take note of, because I we put it in our, our resource page, are there's a lot of historic markers <laughs> that can be used if they're pointed to. You don't have to repeat <laughs> all of that stuff if there's some way to indicate that. Or we can be like, look at this historical marker. Every line on it is wrong. <laughs> right, right. Well, we do, we do have in the legend, each of the sites will have it'll explain if there's a historic marker or if uh, so they will have that information. It might be wrong, but <laughs> it'll be there. Um, okay, uh, so let's move on to the next agenda item, which was the ex officio um, um, assignment. I'll, um, I'll let Jenny actually just talk about this because I I can otherwise if you want me to. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm here. Um, <clears throat> I was just finishing my lunch off camera. Um, well, I uh, met Tom Chapman for the first time in uh, December, I think, but I'd uh, seen his name as a very regular participant. And correct me if I'm wrong, Margaret, but I think you joined as the as the representative of of the historical society and and so it just occurred to me when I met Tom and we were chatting that that he's always here. He's the most regular participant of our meetings. And sometimes it would be nice to ask him a question or have him weigh in other than in public comment. And so I just thought it was appropriate to ask if he could become an ex officio member of, of, uh, of the committee. Yes, and uh, Tom has also expressed interest in uh, doing that yeah so I, when i met him i asked him if he would consider that and he seemed uh positive about it and i wasn't able to attend the december meeting i'm sorry i didn't communicate with you before uh but i was sick a lot in december so um here we are i i think it would be great and if if it's appropriate to make a motion uh I well, why, so. why not an official member i mean I, it's an honest question i actually uh, don't know yeah so <laughs> That is our, that has uh, already gone through the process. Yeah, I thought it had. Um, I thought, yeah, it, Tom, are you there? I, I'm a, I, I am only a little hesitant because there's some confidentiality issues with applying to public boards and decisions and whether or not they're public or not. Uh, but the issue before us is that um, whether the, um, the, I guess the executive director of the uh, Amaral uh, Charlottesville Historical Society should be um, uh, should be uh, what's the ex, <laughs> ex, ex officio <laughs> member made, made an ex officio member of the committee, yeah. um, which we have in our bylaws. We are allowed to um, we are allowed to add non voting ex officio members, and in general, ex officio means that they the person is um is a member of the committee because of their uh position rather than them as an individual like everybody else uh, on the committee um and so like jeff and robert are ex officio members because they are um they have specific positions within nds well phil i i just wanted to point out that uh, uh just what you've said is exactly right but just to nail that down um there have been several representatives from the historical society in the past that were ex officio, you know, as you're proposing now for Tom. Uh, when I came on 
to the best of my understanding, I was taken on as a regular member, you know, just for uh, you know uh, interest and uh, uh, work with you know so, uh, top topics that we're interested in. Uh, but just to point that out, but we have had ex officio people from the society before. Uh, but I think it's a fine idea to have Tom on the uh, committee in whatever way we want to have him. So. Are we, should, should uh, the African American Heritage Center be represented in the same capacity? <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was going to suggest that, uh, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I, I don't know what Dr. Douglas would, um, you know, how she would respond to this, but we, um, we could certainly ask um, whether or not uh, she or a representative of, from, um, from JSAC is, uh, would be interested in, in being an ex officio member. How many members of our current committee are board members of, of the Heritage Center? Any? None, none that I'm aware of. Okay. Like, I'm, a, I'm an advisory member. I'm not a board member of, of the Jefferson School, but I'm on the advisory board. And of course, yeah. you know, Andrea and I do a lot of um, a lot of different projects together, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I, you know, before I brought this forward, I, I thought about uh, the Heritage Center and Preservation Piedmont, and I kind of looked around at our group and thought, well, they're informally represented now, and I don't think Historical Society is, although maybe you've joined as a board member, Kay, is that? Yes, I am a board member. I was going to yeah, say so, that. But I really was doing it because um, I see that Tom is always at our, is always at our meetings, which shows a high level of, of interest and because we had had the tradition of it being uh, represented. And, and I know they're doing a lot of research at the moment that relates to what, what we're doing. Um, would you like to make anyway, a motion? I, oh. I, I would make a motion that uh, he be asked to join as an ex officio member. And I do that because that's something that, that we can initiate without having to go through a city process. Uh, Kay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll second it and I'd like to make a comment. Okay, comment away. Um, so I, I just wanted to say, I think it would be really good in asking both uh, the African American Heritage Center and um, the Historical Society. We overlap, like even on this map thing we were just talking about, it would have been, it'd be so good to have input. Um, the Historical Society has done these tours and we've been using their, and, HRC's book, but they are still doing tours. And, and of course, uh, we used as a model the, the map from the, uh, that had been produced by the Heritage Center. So I, I, I really would like to see us invite someone from that group as well. That's great. Um, Jelaine, would you be able to contact Dr. Douglas and ask if she or somebody else as a representative of mm -hmm. the Jefferson School would be interested in joining as an ex officio member. Will do. Thank you. Are there any more discussions on the motion on the table? Okay, with that, um, all in favor of passing the motion, please so indicate. Oh, yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay, Aye. and that's unanimous. Okay, um, so Tom Chapman in his uh, position as executive director of the Ab uh, Admiral Charlottesville Historical Society um, is now has been appointed as a ex officio member of this board. Okay, um, I think that's all we had for that uh, item, and let's move on to staff updates. Uh, Jeff, uh, I'm gonna take over. Yeah, I, I mean, I really don't have much. I'm, not, I'm actually in my office today and kind of overwhelmed <laughs> by what, what's accumulated in almost two years. Um, but um, the no, nothing really, uh, nothing new uh, to offer you all. Uh, I know that um, I can tell you, I think Charlottesville tomorrow will be running a story about Penn Park uh, Cemetery. Uh, soon uh, I've, I've been speaking with them about some clarifications and questions um i believe sometime in february 
Tom and I and um, Tom Chapman and I, and I think Stephen Waller will be joining us possibly to uh, with the Jefferson Madison Re Regional Library again to to have a, a, a Zoom presentation about uh, what's going on out there. The um, as you know, I like to I refer to what's going on in the mall. Robert has I put him in charge of that, and um, hopefully you know we'll have an update on on where things stand with that. But uh, it, it is something where um, there's really an opportunity to to plan ahead for that in in um, in some pu public discussions and dialogue and sort of things that build towards that 50th anniversary and not just um, responding to it. And um, we did get a note out about, I think the city is trying to get folks back into the office in March. Um, what that means for meetings remains to be seen. So um, just continue to stay tuned on that. Um, and that's all, any questions for me? Yeah, I think the other thing that I would add for this, not speaking as the for the group, but just speaking for myself, is that I'm not particularly uh, eager to result, return to in-person meetings. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. It's uh, I know where <laughs> um, even even post-pandemic, I am uh, I've seen a lot of value in having these virtual meetings for uh, public meetings and the large, the significantly larger amount of public engagement. Um, that they've had, maybe not with this committee, but with um, others. Um, and that's so. where council has been, as you all know, we've all wavered up and down on this, but um, enthused to go back, enthused not. I think there are certain um, uh, committees uh, where, and then they'd be BAR, Board of Zoning Appeals, Planning Commission, City Council, where they are uh, in-person meeting for the individuals on, the, on those panels uh, with people uh, having the ability to participate in them, for example, an applicant or something can participate remotely. Um, for a committee like ours, um, I, I'm not sure where we fell on those things on that, in that matrix. The, the thing to realize is that what's happened with putting these, using the Zoom is the communication staff had to find, you know, allocate staff time to, to, to put these on and, and schedule them so there's a there's been a cost and a scheduling headache associated with all that that that, that some of that may dictate um at some point um you know that that city says well you, you all if you want to meet then you need to meet in person but but we're not at that point yet but um i i, I don't foresee uh the zoom meeting being a uh, uh a thing that we all default to in the future so but who knows what the future is going to bring okay thanks jeff um, next up, uh, coordinate agenda for February meeting. Um, I think we'll probably just have the same agenda again because uh, we have had that for this last eight months, I think. Um, if there's anything else that we need to add to it, uh, either bring that up now or let Robert know. And then we'd had some discussion about two meetings in February. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know if we, I don't even know if I have the, the um, mental space to think about another year ahead um, right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody has any, anybody else has any thoughts on whether we should have an, an extra meeting in February to sort of plan ahead for the year or not. Seems like we sort of have our plate full. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, maybe, maybe Robert has some ideas about what that would be, but. Uh, yeah, I, I almost feel like a better time to plan would be after we get the, uh, the map and the um, court square work sort of wrapped up later in the, later in the summer or fall, um, and then sort of look forward to what we're going to do next from there. Okay, so let's just uh, plan on having our single meeting in February. That's February 11th, I believe. And um, yeah, go from there. Um, any announcements? I have one announcement. I just want to announce uh, there's a 37th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Community Celebration 
uh, that's going to be streamed on YouTube on um, Sunday, January 23rd at 4. And uh, it can be accessed at MLK Seabill. And this is when there's going to be a scholarship winner. There's going to be another one that'll be live, hopefully later in the spring. But this is the, you know, has been the traditional um, community gathering for Martin Luther King Day. And there is a scholarship winner of a student who will be announced, and then they'll read it in uh, in April when the event occurs again. <laughs> and but there's going to be a really good panel with. Um, Sarad so Davenport, Cameron Webb, and Bitsy Waters, and uh, Nancy O'Brien. So I think that'll, hope you'll tune in and it'll be an hour long. Great, thank you. Can, can you send a, a reminder? Yeah, send, why don't I send the flyer, since I don't know how it gets to the whole committee, I'll send it to, uh, I'll send it to Jeff and yes. ask him to send it to the committee. Oh, that'd be great, thank you. Okay, well, thank everyone for being here today, and we'll see you next yeah. time. Enjoy the snow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bye. Hey, all. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. Bye.